Hi guys, in this video we will be learning about periglacial landscapes. We will learn about permafrost, mass movement processes and the formation of patterned ground. To begin with, periglacial landscapes refer to landscapes which are very cold but not glaciated landscapes. So as we learned in previous videos, this includes regions called the tundra, which is these regions here highlighted in green, which are the northern regions of Alaska and Canada, as well as northern Russia in the place called Siberia, and the outer coast of Greenland and northern Iceland, and that is what is the area called the tundra. These areas are very cold as they have temperatures ranging from minus 1 degrees Celsius to minus 15 degrees Celsius and they have low levels of precipitation too with about 120 millimetres to 1400 millimetres per year. And now we are going to look at the features of these periglacial landscapes. The first feature we're going to look at is called permafrost and I've mentioned this in previous videos but this is another term for permanently frozen ground. So we can see the perma in this name comes from the word permanently and this is an image of permafrost here and as you can see it's a very cold landscape. For land to become permafrost it has to remain less than zero degrees C so Celsius for more than two years and this will help to freeze the ground. Currently 20 to 25 percent of the earth's surface is permafrost. So this is in these northern regions like northern Canada and Siberia that we saw on the map earlier. Permafrost is formed when any water in the soil freezes and along with it organic particles and minerals are cemented together. In the summer when temperatures rise, the top layer, which is called the surface layer, which is self-explanatory, might melt a bit. And this is what we can call the active layer. So the active layer is when the surface layer melts in the summer and becomes the active layer. And this active layer is very important because when this active layer is formed, lots of water is released. And in this video and in the next video, we're going to look at the landforms which are caused by said release in water. There are three different categories of permafrost and these are continuous, discontinuous and sporadic permafrost. So continuous permafrost occurs in the coldest regions on earth and the permafrost layer can reach deep into the earth's surface and can reach up to 1,500 metres in depth. So the frozen ground extends a long way underground and here in the continuous permafrost, such as in northern Siberia, which is in northern Russia, there is hardly any melting of the upper layer, as I just discussed. Now the discontinuous layer is in areas that are slightly warmer than the colder regions of Siberia, so such as in northern Canada, but as I said they're only slightly warmer, they're still very very cold, and the ground isn't frozen to the same depths as 1,500 metres, the ground is frozen roughly between 20 to 30 metres deep, but on some occasions it can reach up to about 45 metres. And finally our sporadic permafrost is where mean temperatures are just like around freezing and they vary around this temperature 
so we only get permafrost in isolated spots where the local climate is cold enough to produce permafrost and there is minimal thawing during the summer. So sporadic permafrost is where it's just cold enough for some areas of the ground known as isolated spots to be frozen all year round and that is what defines permafrost, it's permanently frozen ground. This might be confusing in that we were just talking about how the surface layer melts but the layers underneath are still frozen, that's why it's permafrost. It's only the surface layer of the permafrost that melts during the summer. Moving on now, we're going to look at periglacial mass movement processes. And there are a number of these and we're going to look into them in detail, starting with solifluxion. Solifluxion occurs when summer temperatures rise enough to melt huge amounts of water in the surface layer of the permafrost and this surface layer then becomes very wet because the water isn't able to move anywhere and this is because the temperatures are so cold that evaporation of the water can't take place and also because the ground is still frozen beneath it the water can't sink into the ground so it stays within the surface layer and therefore it is very wet also known as waterlogged and this is where just this layer of ground is completely saturated with water. Now due to this saturation of the surface layer there is excessive lubrication because this water therefore reduces the friction between soil particles. This means that the soil particles can move around each other easily and they can slide about. So when we have slopes and these slopes only need to be as gentle as two degrees in gradient. Because of this lubrication due to the water, the saturated layer becomes mobile, which means it's able to move, and it starts to flow down slope. And this can happen in many environments, but when it's related to the freezing and thawing of the active layer that we were just talking about, the surface layer, in cold environments, this process can also be referred to as jelly fluxion, but we only really need to know that it's called solifluxion. So just to summarise solifluxion, it occurs when temperatures rise in the summer, so the frozen water in the surface layer of the permafrost melts, makes the surface layer very wet, and this causes the soil particles to be able to move around each other, and while we have slopes, this then can move down slope, or the soil slides down. Our next mass process of mass movement is conjellifluxion, and we don't need to know much about this, but this only means that, or this only relates to any flows of earth within the still frozen parts of the permafrost. And that is simply all we need to know about conjellifluxion, just this definition, that it is any flows of earth within the still frozen permafrost. Our third type of mass movement is frost creep, and this is the gradual downslope movement of individual soil particles due to alternating freeze and thaw cycles. So this is when during the summer and winter when the upper layers of the permafrost will melt and then freeze again during the winter. And this only occurs in the active layer of the permafrost, which is the surface layer when it melts, as we discussed before. And our last type of mass movement is rock floors, and this is essentially freeze-thaw weathering, which we discussed in earlier videos of glaciated landscapes, which is the shattering of rock when water freezes inside it and the water expands as it turns into ice and this shatters the rock. And I'm not going to go into this in detail because I discussed it in great detail in another video. But this process can cause the formation of scree slopes at the bottom of slopes, which are a common periglacial land form. 
and this is simply all this shattered rock just collecting at the bottom of a slope. So we might have our slope here and we've got shattering happening across here and this is our scree slope that's going to develop at the bottom of the slope of just a collection of the material. So this is called scree. But where the land is flat, we don't get these scree slopes, but we get something called block field. And this is just fields that are filled with angular boulders. And the name really speaks for itself. It's blocks of rocks across a field of flat land. And these blocks here are subject to freeze thaw weathering. So lastly, in this video, we're going to look at our first periglacial landform, which is called patterned ground. And the next video is going to cover the rest of the landforms. So this image here is showing a type of patterned ground. And there are lots of different types of patterns that can be produced. But for the sake of simplicity, because these processes are quite complex, we're just going to give you a vague idea of how patterned ground is formed in general. So patterned ground is normally formed through repetitive freezing and thawing cycles, which I just talked was in the summer and the winter. The ground thaws in the summer and then freezes over winter. And this is a cycle. And this cycle of freezing and thawing is able to create many landforms, including patterned ground, which is what we're looking at here. This process can also be called frost heave, but it's pretty much the same as a freeze thaw cycle. That's just a more specific name. So the process of creating patterned ground is that as the active layer of the permafrost, which is the surface layer where water has melted during the summer, the active layer starts to freeze and ice crystals begin to develop. And as we've learned in previous videos, when water comes to ice, it expands. So this is going to increase the volume of the soil and this causes the upward expansion of the soil surface. And this upward expansion as the increase of volume of soil forms small domes on the surface of the land. Another type of formation we are going to look at is where stones influence the patterned ground. So where we have stones, stones have a lower specific heat capacity than the soil around it. And this is not something we need to go into detail about, but specific heat capacity simply means the rate in which a material can absorb heat or freeze. So as you might know, water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, but another liquid might have a lower or higher boiling point. And this is the same for solids, except it's called a heat capacity. So stones freeze and expand faster than soil. So any soil that's around a stone will freeze faster than some other soil, which might not be near a stone because the stone is able to cool the soil around it. And as we learnt over here, as the soil freezes, it increases in volume and this pushes the stone upwards till it reaches the surface of the earth. And this can be seen in this photo up here where we've got lots of little pebbles on the surface. And this is because they've been pushed upwards as the soil has expanded. So I'm just going to draw a little diagram to explain this. So say this is our surface layer of the permafrost and we've got some stones under the ground. These stones get much colder, much faster than the soil, and they are going to cool the soil around them much faster than any of the soil down here. And this soil is going to expand as it cools and freezes, and the rocks are going to be pushed higher up until they reach the surface because the soil is expanding as the ice crystals in the soil develop. So once again, these stones are pushed up as the soil expands and freezes and this leaves patterns of rocks on the surface of the land. And we haven't learned about the specific type of soil pattern in this picture, but it's just to give you an example 
of how the land in permafrost areas, in periglacial landscapes, can be patterns like this. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.